Hello, today's a wonderful day. Oh, or is it? You wouldn't believe what I've been through today. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. So I think I need this motivation pump up more than anyone else watching. And, and that's the secret to these daily devotionals is that they're not just for you. They're for me as well. I get as much out of it in preparing them, reading them, and getting into it. And it's enjoyable to do. So today is August 23rd. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Click a like. Share this with a friend. 131 days left in the year. Let's get into it with a scripture and let's have some fun and may your day go well. Psalm 32 verse 2. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, in whose spirit there is no guile. Reading the Bible in a year, today is Psalm 113 to 115 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Here's your thoughts for the day. The good news of the gospel is that there is a resource of divine mercy which is able to overcome a contradiction with our own souls which we cannot overcome ourselves. The man who hates God is not far from the kingdom. It is a spiritually indifferent man who has placed himself almost beyond hope. Everyone complains of his memory, no one of his judgment. <laughs> Motivation for today Give it your best shot and see what happens. On Today in History in 1793, France introduces national conscription, calling all unmarried men aged 18 to 25 to join the country's armed forces. 1940, World War II is the start of the Blitz. That's the nighttime bombing of English towns and cities by German bombers. 1942, World War II is the beginning of the Battle of Stalingrad. 1990, East and West Germany announce they will unite on October the 3rd. In 2007, the hashtag, pound sign, is invented and used in a tweet by U.S. designer Chris Mazzina. And that, of course, today is the standard way to find out what's trending. Devotional thoughts for today. Making the most of your free time, Galatians 5.13. Use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. References today are from Acts 10, 9 through 16. The Pharisees once challenged the Lord about why his disciples did not ceremonially wash their hands before eating, an accusation of uncleanliness. Jesus responded strongly, calling the religious leaders hypocrites and quoting Isaiah about the contrast between outward rituals and the inner heart attitudes. He condemned them for holding on to tradition while letting go of God's commands. And he taught those watching that spiritual uncleanliness is defined not so much as things as food, but rather by sinful actions that flow out of sinful thoughts. You can read Mark 7 for that. Peter should have remembered this epistle when uh, the afternoon he was on the rooftop in Joppa. And while praying, he saw a puzzling vision of animals lowered from heaven in a sheet. He refused to eat them because at least some of them were unclean according to the Mosaic law. The tradition and cultural conditioning initially proved stronger than the very voice of God. What Peter couldn't see was that God was already at work through the Roman centurion Cornelius to open the door of the gospel to the Gentiles. Peter's experience provides a contrast to Eve. Remember, we went over that yesterday. She ate food forbidden to eat. He resisted God's commandment to eat what was not forbidden, but God persisted and he eventually obeyed. Now, what if he'd stubbornly insisted on following the rules for purity he knew or thought you know, maybe he knew. Uh, what if he had said, better safe than sorry? To choose obedience and freedom, uh, he had to open his mind to the new concepts and new practices. Later, when Peter allowed himself to be pressured into legalism, Paul confronted him in defense of the faith. You see, Peter had all of these things, and the beauty is that he overcame them. But, uh, you know, we have to have a little bit of sympathy and compassion and patience on our brothers and sisters when maybe they're caught up in some old tangled traditions and it's difficult for them to undo the old life. The new life is there. Christ is there to transform. 
And we're going to love them and encourage them and be right beside them and see them get the victory just as much as any of us as well if we've got something to shed from our old life. And what about the powerful hand of God? 1 Kings 18, 45 to 46. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black and the clouds and the wind and there was heavy rain. So Ahab rode ahead and went to Jezreel. And then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Oh, you know, you think maybe Elijah's an Olympic runner, a, uh, you know, a fast sprinter, a marathoner or whatever. Uh, and uh, it's quite amazing when we take a look at this. Now, let me give you a thought from uh, our Canadian winters here. Skiers or snow skiers, you know, the problem, we, we can swoosh down the hill, but once you get down to the bottom of the hill, getting back up is uh, maybe a problem. That's why they invented the ski lift. But uh, they've come up with a new ski invention, which is kind of introduced uh, to the world of downhill skiing. A lot of you that maybe have been out uh, kite surfing on the on the flat waters would understand this, but you can now do ski sailing and it enables a skier with the aid of a sail or a parachute type device to ski uphill using the power of the wind. By virtue of the wind, the power behind you becomes greater than the hill above you. Elijah also knew what it was like to experience a power behind himself to accomplish what God required. As the rains descended, as it became a race to see who would arrive back in Jezreel to announce the news of Baal's defeat, it was not under his own power, but by the hand of the Lord that Elijah outdistanced Ahab, even though the king had a horse and a chariot, and Elijah was on foot. When confronted with difficult tasks, we often hesitate because we fail to take into account the divine power that we have behind us. If God is for us, who can be against? We've probably heard that, but we need to now in these days take that step of faith and trust that God has our back. So when God's hand is upon us, no challenge is too great for us. Others may have advantages we don't possess. They may be more experienced, more knowledgeable, or more talented, but all that is irrelevant if God's hand is upon us. Human resources are no match for God's power. If you are disadvantaged, facing difficulties beyond your abilities, don't give up. Ask God to apply his powerful hand to your situation. With the power of God filling your sails, no slope is too steep. Others may appear to have the upper hand, but God has the more powerful hand. If your life is an uphill slope, set your sails to catch God's power. And just a short one today, we'll finish it there. Go on to the fun facts. Well, in Alcatraz, prisoner Al Capone was inmate number 85. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and is also the largest planet in the solar system. And did you know it's twice as big as all the other planets combined? Here's your closing thought. Be what you want the world to be. Jokes for today. Two sisters, one blonde and a brunette, inherit a family ranch. Unfortunately, after just a few weeks, they are financially in trouble. In order to keep the bank from repossessing the ranch, they need to purchase a bull so that they can breed their own stock. Upon leaving, the brunette tells her sister, When I get there, if I decide to buy the bull, I'll contact you to drive out after me and haul it home. Well, the brunette arrives at the man's ranch, inspects the bull, and decides she wants to buy it. The man tells her that he will sell it for $5.99, no less. Okay, well, after buying the bull, she drives to the nearest town to send her sister a telegram to tell her the news. She walks into the telegraph office and says, I want to send a telegram to my sister telling her that I bought a bull for our ranch. I need her to hitch the trailer to our pickup truck and drive out here so we can haul it home. Well, the telegraph operator explains that he'd be glad to help her, and it's just 99 cents a word. Wow, the, brun the brunette is just thinking about it. After the price of the bull, she's only got a dollar left. She realizes she's only got enough for one word. She thought about it for a few minutes and nods and says, I know, I want to send you the word, and the word is comfortable. The telegraph operator shakes his head. How is she ever going to know that you want to hitch the trailer to your pickup truck, drive out here, haul that bull back to your ranch if you send her the word comfortable? 
Well, the brunette explains, well, my sister's blonde and the word is big. She'll read it slow. Comfortable. <laughs> Comfortable. Comfortable. <laughs> That's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless. See you tomorrow.